Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and a few weeks ago, Apple announced that you could use your Xbox One or PlayStation 4 controller with the upcoming version of iOS that will be available for the iPhone and the newly announced iPad OS that will be out for the iPad. Uh, both of those operating systems will be available in the fall, but you can get a public beta now. So I thought we would put it to the test and see exactly how well this controller compatibility works both with my Xbox One controller here and this PS4 controller. And what we're going to do to test them is stream games from my gaming PC upstairs down to the iPad here with me in the basement. And we're going to use the Moonlight app that I covered last year. And you can find more out about that app in the uh, comment description section down below. And we'll see exactly whether or not this stuff is working yet or not. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that everything in this video I paid for with my own funds, including the iPad, the keyboard, and both controllers. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how well these controllers work on the iPad. Now, pairing up my Xbox controller here was very simple. All you do is go into the Bluetooth settings here, hit the little pairing button at the top of the controller there, and then it will show up like anything else would on your iPad and you can see I've got the Xbox wireless controller already attached here to my iPad. So let's zoom back over to Moonlight and let's connect to my PC upstairs and load up a game and see how it all works. So let's get uh, No Man's Sky going here and we will be right back to see exactly how this works. All right, so here we are playing No Man's Sky. Now you could do this with Moonlight before, but Apple only supported controllers that were complying with their MFI standard, and that standard did not allow for clickable sticks. And that meant that a lot of games like this one were not playable because there are some functions that require your sticks being clicked here. Uh, so in this game, if I click the left stick here, you can see it does a scan, and that worked. This is in the beta, mind you, so that's great to see. And then as my character is walking here, if I hold down the right uh, stick button here, you can see now he's running. And if I let go of it, he will start walking again. So there you go. So it looks like the clickable sticks here are working as they are supposed to, which is great. And you can have a full uh, PC gaming experience here. Uh, the triggers work. The uh, upper buttons here are also working as well. So that is good to see. So everything seems to be functional on the Xbox controller. So let's take a look now at the PS4 controller. And what I did with the PS4 was just plug it into the USB port uh, on the iPad here. And sure enough, it seems to be working just fine, as you can see. It's actually uh, working just as well as the Xbox controller did without even hooking it up with a, a wireless connection. So we could still do that if we wanted to, but we also have the option here, apparently, uh, to plug in directly to the iPad Pro's USB-C port. And it looks like my uh, sticks are clicking here also appropriately, and everything seems to work just as well as it does on the Xbox. So you can find the controller that best fits your needs and attach it, and you're good to go. Uh, one thing to note on the controller selection is that the Xbox controllers were not always supporting Bluetooth. So you have to look for some of the newer ones that came out around the time that the Xbox One S was released. And if you get one of those, it does have Bluetooth versus the proprietary Xbox protocol they were using initially, and those will work with your iPad. Older controllers will probably not work, so just make sure you get the right one. But overall, this seems to be uh, working as advertised. Uh, there will be more and more games that should support the uh, broader functions of these controllers coming out on iOS shortly, so that's going to be exciting to see, especially given how much horsepower uh, is on the iPad Pro here. Uh, earlier, I tested it out with Steam Link, which is Steam's version of in-home game streaming. That will work uh, not only with NVIDIA cards like Moonlight does, but also with AMD cards. Uh, that worked just fine, including the clickable sticks already on the beta too. So you have a lot of options here for doing PC game streaming. You can run, of course, the uh, native iPad and iPhone uh, apps that will be out that will support these controllers. You can even get little uh, docking devices for the controller to put your phone or your iPod Touch or whatever uh, onto the controller itself so you have a nice little portable gaming solution too. So lots of fun things, I think, coming up for the iPad and iPhone uh, given how many games are already on the platform and now we'll have uh, some usable good controllers to actually play these things with. And I think it'll support the Apple TV as well. So lots of things to be excited for here. iOS 13 and iPad OS will support 
a wide range of devices. I'll put a link to the compatible devices down below in the video description. Uh, this will even work with those $249 iPads we looked at a few weeks ago too. So lots of good things coming up here if you are an iPhone or uh, iPad user, things that Android folks have had for a long time, unfortunately. Uh, but now we're finally getting it. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.